How can I identify key features of square root functions and graph them? What we're going to look at is a square root function where we have y equals the square root of x, or f of x equals the square root of x. In this case, in order for it to be a function, we're only graphing the positive square roots of this. Um, so it's, it's going to end up looking like this, where you put an x value of 0, the square root of 0 is 0. And that's going to be your initial or starting point for the graph. Um, that's important to identify in a square root function because once you do that, it's always going to look like this kind of upward, half, sideways parabola. If um, you graph the whole thing, it wouldn't be a function because it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. But the negative square roots would kind of create a parabola that would look something like this, right? And it almost looked like a sideways parabola. Um, but anyway, 0, 0. If x is 1, y is 1, and I put that point. If x is 4, y is 2, and this is how I would go about graphing these, is I would pick easy points to take the square root of, like the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is, is 2, and I have these points, and then I just sketch this line through it like so. This is the parent function that we'll start with and translate and move it around accordingly. Your domain for this is going to include 0 and go all the way to positive infinity. And your range is going to be 0, and it will eventually get up to positive infinity as well. So my range goes from here up, and my domain goes from here over. Um, uh, your y-intercept is also going to end up being the origin there. It'll always it'll so be where it crosses the y-intercept, or where x is equal to 0. Now, you can translate this in the same way. You can stretch and compress it with an A value. Also, the A value would kind of indicate the increasing or decreasing. What do I mean by that? Basically, if you take the A and you make it negative, it just kind of flips this over. So instead of it being increasing, it kind of looks like a decreasing value there. Um, and at... at <clears throat> h is your horizontal shift again it's minus h and k is the vertical shift and again it's plus k so the sign here will determine whether or not you're going up or down left or right minus h is a shift to the right plus k is a shift up plus h is a shift to the left minus k is a shift down now using that information let's go ahead and sketch some graphs on here so f of x equals the square root of x. I've already sketched that. I'm going to start here and do f of x equals negative 2 times the square root of x. All I'm going to do is start putting in values here. I can do 0. The square root of 0 is 0. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. So actually, my starting point will be 0, 0. That doesn't move at all. That's also because there's no h value and no k value. So if h and k are 0, my starting point is going to be 0, 0, because that's what your starting point is always going to be h comma k. There, that'll always end up being your starting point. Now, my next point, let's go with 1. The square root of 1 I can do, that's 1. 1 times negative 2 is going to be negative 2. So I go 1, and then I go down 2. 1, let's mark some lines here, 1, 2. So it looks something like that. Let's then try the square root of 4. Four, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 times negative 2 would be negative 4. So it would be 4, comma, negative 4. And look here. So in this case, we end up kind of, uh, we end up sort of stretching this. Or we come, I guess, looks like it's just kind of getting, looks just like this. I'm not sure if we call that a stretch or a compress. Normally, as the a value is that, we call it a compress. Um, but since it's negative, it goes down. And it sort of, instead of it being 4, 2, it gets 4, 4. So it kind of opens up a little bit faster there. Oh, then we go on to the next one. f of x equals x plus 3, or the square root of x plus 3. So again, this one's going to almost look the same as this, except your plus 3. So your k value is 3, so you actually go 0, up 3. And this is when x is 0, you add 3. So that's your starting point. So when x is 1, the square root of 1 plus 3 is 4. So we go 1, 4. When x is 4, that's going to be 2 plus 3 is 5. So you end up all the way up here, and it's going to look something like this. 
that would be that graph there with a starting point of zero comma three. This one over here is gonna be minus two, so you have a h value of two. And so when x is zero, it becomes negative two, so it doesn't actually, it no longer is defined at x is zero. You actually have to go over to two. At the lowest x value that it's defined at is two, so you go to the right two. That's your initial point. And then when you go over one more, x is three. Three minus two is one. The square root of one is one, so it goes up to one. And then you go all the way up to what, three, one, two, three, four. So you go over four, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So x is six, six minus two is four. The square root of four is two. So you go up to two and it's just a shifted over version of this original graph. And I, those would actually, they'll never actually cross. Um, it's probably not that great of a sketch for the first one, but that would be the purple line. Once again, just some basic translations here. So let's take a harder one and sort of look at that. Here's one that involves all of them. I have just a negative one for my a value. I got a plus two here and a minus um, one. So my h value is going to be negative two. And my k value is actually going to be negative one because it's usually plus k and minus eight. So negative two, negative one is, is going to be my initial value. And so I go negative two, negative one, and I can plot that there. Um, and that'll be my initial value. And I would just say that means that if x is negative two, negative two plus two is zero. The square root of zero would be zero, so that would still be negative. And zero minus one is negative one. So at that point, negative two, negative one is my initial value. Then as x increases from negative two, so I go x is negative one, plus 2 is positive 1, right? The square root of positive 1 is 1. Make that negative to negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So when x is negative 1, y is going to be negative 2. And then I shift that. And then I would say, okay, so again, normally I try to go square root of 4. Well, how do I get to a square root of 4? I would have to make an x value of 2 plus 2, right? Which is actually from the initial value of negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. I go over 4, and that would be positive 2. So 2 plus 2 is 4. The square root of that is 2. Make it negative. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. 1, 2, 3. So 2, negative 3. And I can sketch this graph, and it would continue sort of through this so and so now my range or let's talk about my y-intercept my y-intercept is going to be somewhere between two and three if x is zero it's going to be the square the negative square root of two minus one which will be somewhere between two and three so um that'll be x is greater than two less than three it's going to be somewhere in this range here um the domain is all my x values, so it'll be basically, it'll be from negative 2, the initial x value, negative 2, to positive infinity. It'll go that way. And my y values for the range is going to be everything from negative 1 and below. So it'll actually be from negative infinity all the way up until negative 1 inclusive put the bracket there and that would be my range this is how you would just some basic um key features square root functions and how to graph them